Hi, my name is George Garcia. In this video, we're going to be looking over the Design Preferences window. So let's start by clicking on the Design Preferences icon. And we're going to see several tabs that help control the design preferences of our design. Now, we are able to load and make changes and merge them into our current setup. But for now, in this video, we're going to go over what each tab does. So the first tab is for loading and saving design preferences. The second tab helps us define our layer stack. Now here you're able to define your dielectric thicknesses, copper thicknesses, copper weights, different material properties, and these are all used in the more sophisticated simulations available in Fusion, such as the signal integrity extension. Additionally, it is through this tab that you define your via pairs, so you can define blind vias, buried vias, and your normal through-hole vias. You'll also notice on the bottom right, we have minimum micro via drill diameter and minimum blind via ratio. Now, these settings used to be on a different tab, which is no longer here. So in order to define them, we have placed them here with the layer stack, as that seemed to make the most sense. Now, you are able to edit material properties by clicking this checkbox, and then you can click on any of these and start making adjustments. If you want to add a via pair, you click here, you simply specify from what layer to what layer, so 2 to 15, for example. We say OK, and you can see it on the right side. So it's very easy to set up the physical configuration of your PCB. Here we have some very common default stack ups. If you come from, from an old Eagle installation, you can use the setup string or you can open up a preset file. And obviously you can save and make your own configurations. Next, let's go into the annular ring settings tab. Now this tab allows you to define the thickness of the annular ring at the manufacturing level. So for example, for different vias, for different pads, you want to specify how thick the annular ring should be. And this is important because in real world, drills have tolerances. They don't land perfectly center every time. So if your annular ring is too thin and the drill misses by enough, you're going to end up breaking the pad. So that's why this setting is important. Now, one thing that's important to note here is that you have control over top layer, over the bottom layer, inner layers. So if you're doing single-sided boards, for example, you can set up the annular ring such that you don't have annular rings on one side of the board. And then on the other you do. That's the side where you're going to solder. I do want to call attention here to this non-functional pad setting. Now this is a micro optimization and this is useful when you have small, very dense layouts. It allows you to remove pads on the inner layers that are not connected to anything. And in doing so, you regain some routing area. By default, they're all kept. However, if you do need to use this optimization, you simply click on the Remove All Radio button. The Shapes tab allows you to do overrides on the pad shapes of your design. Most of the time, you'll want to keep everything as it is in the library. But if it's ever necessary, you can come in and adjust. In the case of through-hole pads, you can say, OK, I want all my top pads to be square. And they will be. Same thing with bottom. And if you've defined a pad in the footprint that is defined as first, then you can make that be a different shape. So the images, when you click on a setting, will make it very clear what they control. The defaults are to use whatever you've defined in the library. Roundness values allow you to take rectangular SMD pads and round off the edges. Um, by default, it's very small the modification but you can also set these to zero and again, leave them exactly as they are in your library. The supply tab controls the thermal isolations in polygons. So it has two important parameters. The first one is the one you can see here, and that's how much isolation you have when you create thermals. The larger this value, the greater the thermal impedance, the easier the pad will be to solder. The smaller this value, the less thermal isolation you're providing. So this is a good middle ground. Again, you would adjust it depending on the needs of your design and of your manufacturer. This checkbox 
generate thermals for vias can sometimes be useful when making boards at home. But basically, it makes sure that not only component pads, but vias that connect to a polygon also get thermal isolation. That way, if you're prototyping and you maybe need to solder a wire to, to a V or to a, a, a test point, this can make that easier. Finally, we have global mass settings. So these allow you to define how much mask expansion you have on the solder mask. As a general rule, it's not a good idea to have the solder mask be the exact same outline as a pad. You want to give it a little extra. So by default, we have it set up that way that you gain a little bit of expansion around the pad. Now for stencils, generally the reverse is true. You're gonna want to either have them be the same size as the pad or maybe slightly smaller. And that's what this parameter does. It controls how much less than the pad the stencil opening is. The larger the pad, the less solder you need on it. So these types of settings are useful to control and make sure you don't have parts floating on a, on a sea of solder. And then finally, the limit value. Now the limit value is a very powerful setting. And what it does is it controls what pads and vias get exposed on the finished PCB and which get covered or tented on the finished PCB. Basically, this is a threshold. So any drills that are larger than the limit value are exposed copper. Anything smaller than the limit value is covered by solder mask. Now, this specific example, this is a manufacturer's rule set. Obviously, the default rule set is going to be different than this. This particular rule set is actually optimized for milling operations. So you're going to notice some things are different. Like, for example, in the mask, normally we have limits set to zero. Here, they want to make sure that they only worry about larger vias to do the, the opening. So these are the settings for design preferences within Fusion. In the next video, we're going to analyze some other options that we can adjust. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.